Hey y'all, we're looking at a model of a neuron. Specifically, what kind of neuron are we looking at? Because remember, neurons can come in different shapes and functions. This has lots of dendrites. This has receiving input from lots of axons and has one major axon. This is a multipolar neuron. This is a multipolar neuron. So if this cell body were in, say, uh, the spinal cord, and here's its axon extending out of the spinal cord, then this would be a motor neuron. More evidence that this is probably a motor neuron, besides it being multipolar. Looking at the axon, we can see that here is one cell creating myelin surrounding the axon, then here's another cell creating myelin for the axon. So if we have one, one cell to one covering, another cell to another covering, those are Schwann cells. Schwann cells are found in the periphery, and motor neurons, their axons are in the periphery. If this were a, uh, an interneuron, it would be multipolar like this, but for the myelin, we would see a cell body out here with extensions that then cover up because that's how oligodendrocytes work. These are Schwann cells, so this must be, this axon must be in the periphery. All right, let's take a look at the different features we see around the cell body. So this is representing the cell body. Part of it is shown as clear so that we can see what's inside, but this part is shown as opaque. So it's the same thing. This is the plasma membrane of the neuron cell body. These extensions, whether clear or, or opaque, these are the dendrites, dendrite, dendrite, dendrite. The purpose of the dendrites is to detect. What are they detecting? They're detecting input from some other source, whether it's a neuron or some other stimulus. So these are axon terminals. They, show, they look really weird because they're cut off, but these are axon terminals of many different neurons. These weird rubbery things look like messed up Hershey Kisses. So these are the axon terminals. These are the dendrites. When an axon terminal releases a neurotransmitter, dendrites, you have receptors on the dendrites, that usually causes some kind of voltage change, let's say depolarization, let's say we're getting activation. So sodium rushes into the cell. Here we're looking into the cell now. You can see the nucleus, uh, rough endoplasmic reticula, Golgi, just like any other cell. So anyways, you've got, you've got that rush of sodium rushing into the cell. And if the stimulus is strong enough, if the stimulus is strong enough, then you've got a buildup of charge at this one point in the cell. This is the axon hillock. The junction between the cell body and the axon, this is the axon hillock. And also a note when we look at histology, the dendrites, they appear darker because they have these, these um, organelles, this nissel body, extending into them while the axons doesn't. So this is how you identify an axon under a microscope. But anyways, say we get a big enough depolarization to rush through the cell. Here is in the axon, in the axon hillock, we have a high concentration of voltage-gated sodium channels. So these are activated by voltage. If, the, if there's a strong enough depolarization, those channels get activated, and then more sodium rushes in. The sodium moves over here. Because of the myelination, it can move without leaking out. And then here, between the myelin sheaths, we've got more channels, more voltage-gated channels, the nodes of Ranvier. More sodium rushes in, sodium moves to the next node. More sodium rushes in, sodium moves to the next node. That's called saltatory conduction. So once again, sodium rushes, a neurotransmitter leaves the axon terminal from this other axon, activates channels here, sodium rushes in. If enough sodium rushes in, we activate voltage-gated channels, which means more sodium rushes in. Move to the move past them to the next node, more sodium rushes in. Move to the next node, more sodium rushes in. Until we get to the axon terminal of that neuron. At that axon terminal, then we get exocytosis of neurotransmitter, and then we can pot potentially activate or inhibit the next neuron, depending on what it is we're releasing. It could be an, another neuron, could be an axon leading to a muscle fiber. We could be controlling a number of things. What you can also see on this model 
is this covering around the axon. So this covering is representing um, this covering is representing endoneurium. Just like on this muscle fiber, we've got endomesium, we've got endoneurium covering the axons of this ax covering the axons of neurons. That is a neuron model. Let me know if you have questions.